Welcome to Das Geek. So I have, we've done this 30 days of, of Linux challenge for almost 30 days now. This is our second to last video. And I'm very excited to bring this to you because we've shown you video editing. We've shown you graphic editing. We've shown you gaming. We've shown you peripherals, GoPros, iPhones, the works. And all of it could be done in Linux. And we did this without knowing ahead of time were things going to work, were they not going to work. And today is no different. We want to talk about game development. Game development, can it Linux? Well, we're going to find out because I happen to have a game developer in the family, the creator of Gods and Nemesis. My brother Chad is here and he doesn't utilize Linux on a daily basis. He utilizes a Windows platform, but his game Gods and Nemesis was actually created utilizing a lot of free and open source software. In fact, it's all free and open source software, right? That is correct. Everything was free and open source. So uh, as a part of the whole beauty of Linux and, and open source and free, I thought it would be a great idea to let Chad sit down. He's not had a chance to play with this ahead of time. The only thing I've done is open Blender for him within Linux, and I have his USB drive here where he has his files from his Windows machine. He's going to load in one of his models, a really awesome model that he utilizes, and just play around and see if there's any performance issues, uh, and he's going to try to slow it down. Now, we couldn't compare speed, Windows versus Linux, because we have quite a bit different computer. He utilizes AMD peripherals. I utilize Intel. So there really wouldn't be a fair comparison there. So um, we're going to get right into it. I'm going to let him sit down, and then we will uh, see how well it Linux. All right, let's see if I can break this. Let's see if you can break it. I can tell that you're left-handed, so I'm going to go oh, ahead. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that part. <laughs> so you can tell we didn't prep ahead of time. Oh. All right, get that mouse over there. You poor left-handers. Lazy right-handers. All right. <laughs> all right, so. All right, let's see if I can pull in a file here. There it is. So far, anything different? No. Nothing different yet, but... I mean, it looks the same. I'm hoping. I think everyone should uh, switch Look on. Look at that. Now, what you're seeing here is the armature, and that allows everything to bend. So I'm going to test that out. R for rotate. Oh, well. That would pull them out a little bit. There we go. Nice. It gives you an idea, but we don't want that in the way, so we'll go ahead and hide that. Go into object mode, select the armature, H for hide. Now there's the model. So far all the shortcuts and everything you're used to using, because I know that's the important part of utilizing. So far I wouldn't know the difference at all. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's go into vertice mode, edit mode. Take a look at the vertices. Nice. Now we have see approximately close to 10,000 faces. So every four points is a face. We'll select each one, as you can see, or you can press A to select the entire thing. Yeah, everything seems to be um, exactly the same so far. I'm gonna do a little test round here. Oh, shift. Huh. That might be different. What are you doing? Trying to select all the faces in a particular ring. It's not allowing me to do that. It might be my setup for Windows. So I guess I would need to select each one individually. So it could be a shortcut difference or something like that. <clears throat> yeah, and there was, I've been using Blender for so long that there, there could have been changes that I had made a long time ago that I don't even remember anymore. So I just deleted out a bunch of stuff. And I'm going to go into... I think is what it's considered. Anyway, each one of these points, I'm going to extrude as if I was making it from scratch. And everything seems to be good. Control Z undoes all that. Very good. I like that. Very cool. All right, now let's see. Can we? It's like a no, not duplicate. It is subdivide. Now we went up to 38,000 faces. I'm going to try to slow down the system. It's Good luck. It's the beast. You're not going to slow. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Try. Try. All right. Now we're at 38,000 38, faces. 
I used to, I did this test when I was first using Blender. I did this test to test out my system to get it, kind of get an idea of where, how many uh, uh, faces I should have on a model. And that's important because if you have trees and each one is 10,000 polys, then um, you're going to run into problems when you start adding everything in. Subdivide again. We're at, what is it, 152,000. Yeah, it's getting a little jaggy. Okay, let's do one more. Uh, that's thinking about it. What are you doing? What are you trying to do to me? Got it. Okay, so we have 1,218,000 polygons. It does not like that. Yeah. Now, that would be a very unusual uh, model at that point. There's special, um, what are they called? I haven't used them in a while. Um, modifiers you can use that simulates having a model with this much detail. Then you can go in and, and modify it as if it was a piece of clay. Um, where is that? Let's go ahead and undo that. See if it can handle the undoing. Let's go back to somewhat but normal. Of course the beast can handle it. Of oh, it did. It, it did uh, well. Yeah, it, did. it ate it up. Let's see. But you've noticed that slowness in the Windows environment as well, right? Absolutely. That is a heck. You have to understand that a video card, when a video game is running, it, it deletes half of the polys that you don't see at any given time. And a 3D modeling program, on the other hand, it has to keep in memory every single polygon, no matter what. Because you're going to be moving it around, and it has to keep that into uh, consideration. So I haven't used this in forever. I go in. I might have to. Yeah. So you can sculpt, just like in ZBrush. Blender is amazing. The people behind Blender, I'll tell you this, are um, some of the highest end that you can get. Let's talk about you've been you've made your game completely free and open source and. One of the things I think is amazing about that is if you were to try to purchase all the software, especially when you started, which was what, six years ago? Yep. The, the, some of these softwares like the Unreal Engine and stuff weren't free at that time. You had to pay a lot of money to get involved in them. I mean, how much right. money has free and open source software? How much would it have cost otherwise for you to be involved in something like this? Did you look at those expensive packages and figure it out? I didn't really write down each individual expense and then try to tally it all together. I would estimate within a $10,000 range. $10,000. Yeah, easily. I mean, because you, you have to get the engines. You have to, you, you're going to get, you know, texture editing software, which GIMP is free. You can use that. Audio editing, I use Audacity. I mean, if you want high-end software for each one of these individual things, then you're going to have to pay a pretty penny for it. And there, you, you even have separate... Um, software just for levels of detail. Um, you have so separate software for calculating the normals, which gives it the bumpy texture effect for um, the textures that you you put on to, um, in this case, a sun dragon. So um, there's all kinds of individual packages that you have to consider. Blender does almost everything. Um, quite, a, I mean, it, it's a, a multi-tool package, and you just the 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 thing is, it's a, it's a learning curve. It's not set up to where it's as pretty as it would be for another type of software package, but it is unbelievably powerful. It's amazing to me because everybody's recommending me utilize Blender as a video editor. And I, I looked at it at first and thought, oh my gosh, I could never learn this thing. But the more and more videos I've watched on it, the more that I realize the power within Blender, even as a video ed editor, which I don't think that was its original purpose, uh, but it's it's got the power of a very professional line of video editors built within it, and you could set up the workflow to do that, whether you're doing 3D modeling and everything else. And in fact, the intro you're going to see, or you already seen to this video, was was a new intro that was programmed in Blender. Now, I'm not as fancy as my brother here. I don't know Blender very well, so I downloaded one of these free templates and did a couple modifications. Once you start learning it, it's actually a ton of fun. What's some other open source or free software that you've utilized as you've created this game for the last six years? Um, well, I mentioned GIMP, and yes. I use uh, Torque Game Engine, which is an extremely powerful engine. When Unity is, is uh, an excellent engine, too. But at the time, Unity didn't have shadowing. Um, this is six years ago, and it didn't have several other things, so I... And it wasn't able to, uh, this poly, this mesh right here, it, went, it, it was very jagged when you would import it. Um, actually, at the time, I had a floating um, fortress, and it wasn't able to turn it 
uh, efficiently. And so there was a lot of little things. It could have been things that I've done wrong, but eventually it led me to Torque. And Torque is completely open source and free. So uh, you definitely should check it out. It's extremely powerful. And um, that would be one of the most important, outside of Blender, I think that is probably the most important free software that I had downloaded um, outside of GIMP, um, which allows me to do the texturing and Audacity for the sound effects, which is extremely important as well. All the animations I do in Blender. And actually, I will show you, let's see. As you can see, there's the Banshees here has various different types of animation. So all of this is done through Blender. All the creatures are made from scratch. So. Nice. And how long did you feel it took you to get comfortable utilizing Blender? Um, I went through several stages. Actually, when I first used Blender, I had started using its game engine. That's actually what got me started into game development. I had the little pumpkin that you can make it jump and things. I think that tutorial is still available. This it was a lot different than a pumpkin. <laughs> a little, a little ways here. Yeah, I mean, but the pumpkin was fun. I always look back at that because that was, I mean, whoever designed that tutorial was brilliant. They showed you how to connect the various uh, parts together and get it and have uh, control of the character, etc. So that that's really what got me started. So there's a game engine inside of Blender on top of everything else, just to keep that in mind. You might want to try it out. There's uh, also people that actually just... Uh, um, make games through Blender, and they're actually a lot of fun. So, it's amazing all of the items that are with inside Blender. You said the is. game engines inside it. We talked about a video yeah. editor. So, Blender is a powerful tool. It's a powerful tool for Linux. So, I mean, this is your first time playing with it. Um, would there be an issue with you continuing your development if you had to, as far as the Blender piece goes, with your with with utilizing or completing? Can yeah. it Linux? Let me, uh, I think that everything works perfectly well. So uh, I'm going to look at the export one last thing and there's Colada. That's what Torque needs. So I'm set, used to be where you had to put in the Colada information or DLL files, whatever it was. And it was, I, w I, I wouldn't know how to do that with Linux, but it um, looks like they already set that up for me as well. So I, I would say that uh, it's perfect. I, if you didn't tell me this was Linux, I probably wouldn't even paid attention to the background or anything, and I would have just gone on my way uh, making the model. So, That's interesting. so I mean, I think it's it's fantastic to show that there are so many different elements to Linux and what it's capable of doing, from gaming design through you know Steam Link we showed through peripherals, video editing. I use Caden Live as a video editor, but I'm definitely getting into Blender. Linux allows you. The fact is, is that the most important thing is, you know, when my brother started this event, we talked about thousands of dollars in investment, and we'll talk about this some more in final thoughts, but what's amazing is that companies and the people who put this together and invest in these projects, they create an open playing field for regular folks like us who don't have unlimited resources to where we can make a game, we can make videos on YouTube, we can develop, we can create without having to have tens of thousands of dollars and investment money, and I think that's one of the things that makes open source and the community such an amazing thing, and definitely recommend if you start utilizing Blender or doing YouTube videos or whatnot, you're making money off some of these products to donate to those projects and uh, make sure you show them some love, spend time, tell them about bugs, whatever it is that you can donate, whether it's your time, money, or other resources, definitely look at doing that because you can tell I mean, Blender, it's its just become this incredible uh, morphing of projects to help solve problems from everybody from game developers to video editors to game engine designing to, to graphic editing. You know, you can do your text and everything else. And so it's just a very powerful tool. So thank you to Chad, the creator of Gods and Nemesis. His demo will be coming out either at the end of this month or first of next year. Yeah, um, I'm going to shoot for December 30th, so we'll see. It's, it's been greenlit on Steam, so you can go check it out, Gods and Nemesis. He's going to have the demo out hopefully very soon here, so you can go and play that demo, and the demo will be free to download, so you can play it, check it out. It's going to be a fantastic game. You're going to see awesome creatures like this inside of it. So, Blender, can it Linux? Hell yeah, it can Linux. Yeah, it can. Until next time, get out there and fill your brains.
subscribe, thumbs up, watch the video.